Good morning, everyone. Welcome you to Grace Bible Church of Phoenix. We're so very glad you're here with us to worship and learn and encourage each other. As people are coming in, why don't you stand with us and sing into our Lord this morning. When all I see is the battle you see my victory when all I see is the mountain you see a mountain move and as I walk through the shadow your love surrounds me There's nothing to fear now, I am safe So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees With my hands lifted high Oh God, the battle belongs to you And every fear I lay at your feet I sing through the night, oh God battle belongs to you and if you are for me who can be against me for Jesus there's nothing impossible You see an empty tomb. So when I'll fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. And Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. So when I'll find, I'll find on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you and every fear I lay at your feet I'll sing through the night oh God the battle belongs to you oh God the battle belongs to you God, we thank you so much for bringing us together this morning, and we thank you uh, for taking the battle. We thank you that um, you have the power to uh, hold our fears and, and just be with us through everything that we go through on a daily basis. We pray these things, and we lift our worship to you this morning. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. 
praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly. For I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. For I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love, God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves at 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love, God I was your foe, steal your love far from me. 
You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love, God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves in 99. And I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it, still you shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me no. there's no wall you won't kick down you won't tear down coming out to me there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me Oh 
couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. All the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love. fills the streets to look upon the one who bled and saved me and walk with him for all eternity there will be a day when all will bow before him there will a day when death will be no more, standing face to face with him who died and rose again. Holy, holy is the Lord. And every prayer desperation the songs of faith we sing through doubt and fear and in the end we'll see that it was worth it when he returns to wipe away our fears there will be a day
have a seat. Well, it is a pleasure to uh, be worshiping with you this morning as we sing of the love that we have received from God and how he has demonstrated that to such a great extent. Um, it's good to worship through song and um, glad that you guys are joining us this morning. I do want to invite, if any of you are visiting us for the first time or if you've not really shared a little bit of your information and you'd like to know a little bit more information about us as a church, uh, I just want to point out that we have a connection card here um, that it'd be great if you could fill out. I uh, might be working on the, the microphone right here that I have. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but if you have any information that you would like us to know, we would like to get a hold of you, uh, be able to welcome you to our church. If you have any prayer requests, we would encourage you to put that down right here, and you can put it in the offering box on your way out, um, and then we would like to con contact you. Um, I also have an announcement. As we're talking about all of the fall stuff coming up, uh, Jam is going to be starting very soon, so sh Sunshine, I would invite you to come up to share a little bit about what's going on in that ministry. And someone pointed out to me, uh, my nickname can be PB, and we're talking about Jam. I don't know if that has anything to do with... <laughs> oh, peanut, peanut butter? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Our Jam ministry is uh, called Just Among Moms. Um, and so it not is, Jam. Uh, know if we have that. Did you get that on the card? No. No. Um, we uh, have a... Oh, you didn't see it. Um, it's just my moms, and it's for all uh, moms that have kids in your home, whether you're working or not. Um, if you're available, you can come. Um, it doesn't matter how old your kids are. If they're in your house, you can come. Um, we meet the second and fourth Thursdays from 9.30 in the morning till 11 a.m. and childcare is provided. Um, and this year our theme um, is abide and um, our shirts are white and they'll have our abide and our, our verse, um, which is John 15, four through 10, um, about abiding in the vine and bearing much fruit. Um, and our study this year is um, Encountering God with by uh, Kelly Minter. Um, it's a video series about uh, spiritual disciplines. Um, the sign-up for JAM is online at gbcphoenix.com slash JAM. Um, and also on uh, Church Center app, yep. you can find it on there and sign up. Um, the cost is 125 for the whole for the whole year it includes everything um, we do our crafts once a month um, Monique is coming back as our craft lady and we're very excited about the things that she has planned for us um, and I think that's it okay we talk about all the different ministries thank you sunshine we talk about the different ministries that we have here at the church and part of it is because we want to build places where we can connect and grow together. And so our values, we're going to even be mentioning some of them today, discipleship and healthy relationships. And I know JAM is a perfect opportunity for, for mothers and for women to be able to connect with each other, but then really work on growing in their walk with God. And talking about building connections and finding places to grow in our faith and walk, we do have our small groups that are going to be starting up. And so want to encourage you to uh, sign up. There is a sign-up sheet in the back next to the, in the foyer there. Uh, if, even if you've been a part of a small group in the past and you're going to be returning to that same small group, it's nice to have that information, mainly maybe for me, um, because I'm going to be working with that ministry, and I'd love to know who is a part of that. And so I encourage you. Uh, if you are interested or if you are planning, please uh, sign up in the back there. Obviously, contact your small group leader. You can obviously be able to get back together with them. But that's a big part for us to uh, build healthy relationships, to dive deeper into our walk with God with each other. And so I encourage you to find ways and a place for you to do that. More announcements just to give you a heads up. Um, in a couple of weeks, Labor Day Sunday, we're not going to be having Sunday school. Uh, a lot of us might be doing different things, different plans. Um, this is just a heads up. We're not planning on doing Sunday school, school that, that morning. And because Labor Day is the first Sunday of, 
um, the month. We're going to push our welcome lunch one week past that to September 11th. So if you're planning on getting into more of a conversation about who we are, uh, plan to do it the second Sunday of that, that month. Um, but right now I'm going to pray for this morning's offering. Um, so pray with me. Dearly Father, we thank you so much for everything that you've given us. We want to be here to praise you. And, and as we are here to worship you, we, we pray that you would encourage our hearts to grow closer to you, to understand where you want us to be, uh, and really know where we're supposed to be walking towards, growing towards, um, becoming more like your son, and doing that together as a community. I pray that as we do give, that you would be using these resources um, for, for ministry that helps us and helps our community you know, not only get to know you, but walk closer to you. And I pray that you would um, bless this time as we get to hear from Pastor Josh, and that we be challenged to continue to grow in that as well. I pray these things in your name. Amen. Well, I wasn't planning to say this, but Pastor Brent broke the ice on something, so I, need to, I feel like I need to say something. Um, he mentioned that sometimes he's called PB, Pastor Brent. Many of you have referred to me over the years as PJ, and I think, and some people have put this connection together, and some of you have already asked if you could call us PB and J. <laughs> I kind of like the ring to that. It's kind of cool, although I was here first. <laughs> But PJ and B stands really, that doesn't sound, that sounds kind of weird. So, but I, I don't mind. If you guys want to refer to us as PB and J, that's kind of cool. I, I don't mind. However, I think that we should limit the abbreviations to the full-time pastoral staff. We have part-time pastoral staff. We have Pastor Mike McFadden, we have Pastor Steve. And if you abbreviate that, it would be PMS. <laughs> so let's not do that, okay? <laughs> All right, I wasn't planning on doing that, but I, he kind of broke the ice, so I had to do that. <laughs> all right, as you can see, today's sermon is going to be a little bit different, all right? It really, it really is. Uh, today, um, we're going to talk about sheep and shepherds. For those of you who are familiar with the Bible, you realize the Bible is constantly referring to us as sheep. And maybe some of us might get a little offended by that. Um, others might say, no, that's, that's rather appropriate. Uh, one of the more famous passages that refer to us as sheep is found in Isaiah 53. In Isaiah 53, it says, I think it's verse 7, verse 6, it says, All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned, every one of us, to his own way, and the Lord has laid on the Messiah, Jesus, the iniquity of us all. So all of us, every, uh, every single one of us, are like sheep. We have all gone astray. And have you ever spent time just kind of considering why God refers to us as sheep? You know, we're, we're modern people living here in America, and, and most of us don't really have a, a close association with sheep, unless you raise sheep like J.C. and Shelley Bourne have had up to 15 sheep. Now you said you've got about seven or so. Did they just disappear? Somehow, magically, they disappeared. Some of them disappeared. But I read this article, and, and you'll see why I'm doing this. I read an article titled, Nine Shocking Reasons Why God Compares Us to Sheep in the Bible. And I'm going to share that with you today because our passage in 1 Peter chapter 5 is about shepherding the flock of God. And so I'm going to read this. I got this article online. I can't remember who wrote it. I mean, if you Googled it, you could probably find this yourself. But it has nine reasons why we are referred to as sheep and usually a corresponding Bible verse. So I just want to go through these. There's your notes. You can write this down as well. But the first reason why we are referred to as sheep is because sheep have no sense of direction. Sheep have no sense of direction, and we as humans can from time to time just wander aimlessly through life, but even worse than that, we can follow the wrong leaders. We can follow the wrong leaders just like sheep. Sheep will follow anyone who is leading them, even if it leads them off a cliff. There was an article in, um, in Eastern Turkey recently about 1,500 unattended sheep that fell off a cliff. And I guess their shepherds were eating breakfast kind of far away from them. And so these 1,500 sheep 
fell off a cliff. And apparently the first 400 fell and they died in a ravine. And the remaining 1,100 landed on the first 400 and they lived. <laughs> kind of like a big cotton ball down there. And, and, and apparently this, this is what happened is the sheep were going to the ravine and as the sheep that were in front saw that there was danger, they couldn't stop because the sheep behind them kept pushing them forward. And so here in this world, we realize sometimes a bunch of us human beings, we start following a leader and sometimes we don't know it's too late until it's too late. So we're kind of like sheep. Sheep have no sense of direction. They, they cannot know where they're supposed to go. Another one is number two. Sheep are defenseless. They are some of the most defenseless animals in the world. They, they do have two things in their arsenal where they can kind of defend themselves. Otherwise, they're, they're very vulnerable to, um, to uh, predators. Um, one thing that sheep can do is when they're frightened, they can run together away from whatever's going to harm them, and they find a lot of safety and protection in the flock. So that's one of their defense mechanisms. Another one is apparently they can kick. Sheep can kick a lot, and they're especially prone to do that if a mom is protecting her young. But these two defense mechanisms, um, besides that, sheep are basically, I love how this article said, they are a giant Snickers bar waiting to be eaten by a wolf. You know, they really can't defend themselves at all. And, and much in the same way, you know, every now we can kind of kick and we can run away, but God compares us to sheep because we need his protection. And not necessarily physical protection, but emotional, spiritual, mental protection. And we also need to stick together. We, like sheep, need to be a part of a flock for that protection. There's a verse in Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, and Jesus says, When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. So Jesus refers to us as sheep. In fact, there's another passage in Acts chapter 20. Paul warns the Ephesians elders about what can happen to their flock. He says, pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he has obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. And so sheep are defenseless. And if we're living life on our own, we can be too. Number three, sheep can't get up without help, okay? And I'm relying on this article because I don't, I'm not around sheep very much, but apparently sheep, if they get turned over on their back, they can't right themselves, okay? They're kind of like a little turtle, you know, they can't, they can't flip themselves over. And there's an old English term for this. It's called when a sheep has been cast down. They're on their back. They cannot get up. They cannot turn themselves, especially if their wool is is um, significant. And if a shepherd does not flip the sheep over and put it on its feet, at some point, it's going to die. It can't do that. It'll be vulnerable to prey. And if it's on its back, it can't follow the flock and it will get lost and it, it could die. And so the sheep can't get up without any help. You know, think about human beings. How many times do we find ourselves cast down and we need someone to come along and pick us up and right us, put us on our feet. And that's what the Lord does. He is our shepherd. He does that for us. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 11, he will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. And so the Lord will pick us up when we are cast down. And that happens to quite a bit of us. Number four, Sheep are emotional and recognize the shepherd's voice. Apparently, sheep have a, a remarkable ability to know the voice of their shepherd. And because they're emotional animals, they can really detect a stranger's voice and they will fear that stranger's voice and they will flee. And because they're emotional, they form close bonds with their fellow sheep and they build friendships with the other sheep and they will actually help protect and stick up for a sheep if it's, if it's in a fight. And they can also get anxious and distressed if one of their sheep, one of the flock dies, they can miss that sheep. Kind of remarkable. I, you know, we can learn a lot from that. We, what they lack in direction, because they're directionless animals, they can make up for it in loyalty and friendship and voice recognition of the shepherd. Um, there's probably a little breakdown when it comes to us and sheep in this because we are not always loyal. 
And we do not always stick up for our friends. And sometimes we struggle to recognize the voice of our shepherd. And that's why it's so important for us to do what we're doing today, where we come together and we read God's word so that we can really be in tune with our shepherd's voice. You're very familiar maybe with John 10, 27. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So we like sheep need to be in tune with the voice of our shepherd. Number five, fifth reason. Sheep are not meant to carry burdens, okay? How many times have you seen a picture of a sheep and they are carrying a pack on their back? They're not meant for that. Other animals are meant for that. Sheep were never meant to carry a heavy load. In fact, that would probably crush them and it would, um, was such a weighty burden. And that's why God compares us to sheep in the Bible. We are told that we, like sheep, are not meant to carry heavy burdens in our life. In Psalm 52, 55, verse 22 God tells us, cast your burdens on the Lord, and he will sustain you. So like sheep, we are not meant to carry heavy burdens. And number six, almost there, sheep will settle for less. They will settle for the immediate instead of what is best for them. I get, apparently, sheep, if there's water right in front of them, and if it's a dirty mud puddle, they will settle for that. If it gives them a little bit of satisfaction, even if there's 20 or 30 feet down in front of them, there's a, a gentle creek flowing. They will settle for less than what is best for them. And sheep will be content with that. And sheep can be content with filth as long as it kind of satisfies them in the moment. And they can also stink and not even know it. Does it sound like some people? Yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit, right? But they, they lack discernment and judgment. And frankly, the sheep, they don't know what is good for them. And many times, we humans, we see a dirty puddle in front of us, and it gives us a little bit of satisfaction, but we, re we don't realize that that is sin that we can get caught up into. And we think, no, it's okay because it's giving me some pleasure. But God is saying, I'm the one who knows what is best. Don't settle for what is less. Let me show you what is best. Psalm 23, verses 1 and 2. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want... He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. God knows where we should graze. God knows where we should gather, have water. He, he knows what is best for us. Humans left to themselves, we will settle for less just like sheep. Number seven, sheep are valuable. They are extremely valuable. Sheep were a prized, a prized um, possession in Jesus' day. And if you had a lot of sheep, a lot of sheep, you know, you were very, a wealthy person. Um, sheep produce milk, um, meat, and wool, and they produce offspring. They produce um, further um, livelihood. How much more valuable are we than sheep? We know how valuable we are because Jesus died on the cross to save us, not the rest of the animal kingdom. He died on the cross to save us. Number eight, sheep cannot care for themselves when wounded, okay? They cannot care for themselves when wounded. When they are wounded, if they get like a bite from a predator, um, they cannot care for themselves. Other animals, if you have cats or dogs, you see them do this all the time. What do they do? They'll lick the wound until it kind of heals itself, um, but sheep need a, a shepherd to tend to their injuries. And many times, as a shepherd is out in the field, they will carry some kind of a salve, and they will tick, uh, put it on the legs or whatever wounded part of the sheep. And sometimes they will bind broken bones. But the sheep need the shepherd to do that. And that's what God does for us. He is the one who heals our wounds. As it says in Psalm 147, verse 3, it says, He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. And so we, like sheep, need the Lord to heal us. And the last one, number nine, Tried to make sure I didn't say verse 8, verse 9 this whole time. I got through that. Number 9 is sheep are innocent. Okay? Now, this is just a kind of a comparison, all right? Sheep are innocent. And when in Christianity, as we look at the Bible, we realize that sheep, they symbolize gentleness, purity, and innocence. And it's not, should not come as a surprise that God used the image of the Passover lamb to say that pure, innocent sacrifice, that holy sacrifice, is what redeemed us from our sins. But God chose to use that as a sheep. The sheep are innocent. Interestingly, another animal that is mentioned many times in the Bible are the goats. 
And I have never raised goats. They're kind of fun to watch on YouTube videos as they're jumping around, you know. But goats, are, they have a different, um, different personality than sheep. Goats are known for being independent, opinionated, and curious at best. And at worst, goats can be vulgar, dangerous, and destructive. All right? And it's not a coincidence that the, the animal most closely associated with Satanism is a, is a goat. So the Bible recognizes a difference between the innocent sheep and the, the naughty little goat. In Matthew chapter 25, it says at the end of time, before Christ's second coming, this is what's going to happen. Matthew 25, 32. And he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? I thought it was a good article. Um, I wanted to share this with you, and I think you're going to see. But can, can you kind of relate to that and kind of see how true that is? That we as human beings, we're, we're a lot like sheep. And, you know, we might say, I'm, I'm not like a sheep. But in many ways, we all are. All of us, all of us human beings are like sheep to some extent. And Peter would have known this. And there was an interesting conversation that Jesus had with Peter after Christ's resurrection and before his ascension. And Peter met Jesus as they were fishing. This is before the ascension. And this is what Jesus said to Peter. This is in John chapter 21. Verse 15, it says, When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. Referring to us. Feed my lambs. Not Peter's lambs. Feed my lambs, Jesus said to him. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, tend my sheep. Give them what they need. Watch them, care for them, protect them. Tend my sheep. And then verse 17. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my my sheep. We are all like sheep. All of us are like sheep. And Jesus is, the Bible tells us, he's our shepherd. He's our chief shepherd. But just like Jesus told Peter, you, even though you're one of the sheep, Peter, I want you to tend my sheep. God has set it up through the local church where God has entrusted his flock to the care of humans. That some of the sheep become the under shepherds of the chief shepherd and we are called, those who are in those positions are called to tend the flock. And that brings us to our passage for today in 1 Peter chapter 5. So we'll read that. 1 Peter chapter 5, beginning in verse 1, it says, So I, Peter, exhort the elders among you, as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed, shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly. Not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to your flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility towards one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble." Now, next week, we're going to look at some of the particulars of this passage and the elders and the pastor's responsibility. But what I want to do for today is I just want to focus on this phrase out of verse 2. This phrase where it says, shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight. And today, what I want to do is I want to introduce you, for those of you who are not aware of them, who your shepherds are here at Grace Bible Church of Phoenix. There is a reason why God has assigned leadership to a plurality of men within each local church. A pastor, myself and Pastor Brent, we are only one of the group who are supposed to pastor and shepherd this flock. And a pastor obviously has very specific responsibilities, but God has always intended for there to be multiple shepherds given and assigned to each flock or a church. And so what I want to do today is a little different. I want to share with you just two things about your shepherds here at Grace Bible Church of Phoenix. And I didn't plan this a long time ago, but it just so happened, I'm going to suspect this is God doing this, 
that I came to 1 Peter chapter 5 on the exact weekend that we had our board retreat. And that's where the board members who are functionally, they are elders, um, biblically they're elders, and we all went away and it give, gave me an opportunity to just appreciate these men who serve as shepherds or elders in this church. And so I want to just share with you two things, okay? And this is almost kind of like a teaser. I want to share with you what the shepherd's purpose is, and then I want to like introduce them to you. So you some of you might know who all of them are, but many of you might not. And so what is the purpose of the elders? What is the purpose of the shepherds? And maybe the, the most broad sense of what we can say the elders are supposed to do is to make sure that we're accomplishing our purpose. We as God's flock, we have a purpose. And here at Grace Bible Church of Phoenix, we describe it like this. We exist to develop committed followers of Jesus Christ through the teaching and encouragement of God's word. And the elders make sure we are focused on that, that we are following the chief shepherd helping people to become more like him. And all of our ministries are based on this mission. And what we have done is we have gone a step further and we have described exactly how we develop committed followers of Jesus Christ. And we describe those through our values. Our values are basically this. If we practice this value, we believe it's helping us to develop committed followers of Jesus Christ. And this weekend, we spent a lot of time clarifying and specifically defining our values. I'm going to call Pastor Brent up right now. I'm going to ask him to do this. And, and they represent how we intend to see our mission become a reality. And so this weekend, we, we defined our values. I asked Pastor Brent to come up and, and just talk about and just give you the definitions that we came up with, and because he and I are going to preach through this in the coming months. And so you don't want to read this. I don't want to read that. You want to read what's on the screen. This is the final draft. We literally went through every sentence and every word of these definitions. So, because we, we picked them carefully. If you have them, yeah, you I think I also have them here, too. Uh, and as I'll, we were going through I'll the description of this, the um, kind of as like an intro, as, as Pastor Josh is, is saying. Is, it's on there. Core values are on there. There you go. Ah, here we are. So, this is actually what I was going to say. We... Our core values, they demonstrate the priorities of how we must live if we are to remain Grace Bible Church of Phoenix. These values guide our ministries, the programs, and the life of our church. And as a result, we strive to evaluate all that we do with these values in mind. So this is the lifestyle that we live. These are actions. These are verbs, for a better word. These are how we want to live, how we want to do our ministries. And so here are the different kind of values that we put up. Um, one of them is being Bible-centered. As we talk about being Bible-centered as a church, we, we say that we approach the Bible as of first importance. And, and I see, actually, Andy and Sue, who are from Bethesda, this might look very familiar because that was also a very big value for us at Bethesda Church as well. But we approach the Bible as of first importance. What we do, what we believe, and what we teach comes from the authority of God's Word. The Bible is central in all that we do, and it takes precedence over church tradition, a shifting culture, and especially our own opinion. So we want to be Bible-centered in how we present things and how we do things and how we live in any aspect of what we do with ministry. Also, we want to be making disciples. I know that's a big part of my job description of being the pastor of discipleship. Uh, but as we define it, we desire to be a community of disciples who in turn make disciples. So it's a kind of continual process. And healthy disciples of Jesus Christ pursues a lifelong process of following and submitting every aspect of our lives to God. In doing so, we will become more like Jesus and help others to do the same. This is a little bit more of a deeper dive of what we mean by discipleship, um, because when we talk about a lifelong process, this is kind of this lifelong process. A disciple of Christ understands and lives in light of who God is, what his sacrifice has done for them, and what he promises for them. Our goal is to help someone from not knowing these things to knowing, and from knowing to being, because there's differences. And, and we talk about this. It, it goes from the thrilling things down to the mundane activities in our life. A healthy disciple knows scripture and lives and serves in light of their relationship with Jesus. Additionally, a disciple of Jesus invites others to join them in this journey, encouraging and equipping others to take their next steps in becoming more like the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it looks like to make disciples and how we want to live that out. 
Also, um, another de definition, and this one we had a lot of discussion on, but yeah. we came up with this concept. We have the value of faithful service. And what we mean by being a faithful servant and being inside of faithful service is we desire to have a continual and sacrificial willingness to serve in the spheres of influence that God has placed us in. Where you find yourself, how do you faithfully serve? We do this by equipping, encouraging, and empowering people to use their God-given gifts and abilities to embrace the opportunities to serve God. And we want to dive into what does that look like for you to not only meet a need, but also live in light of what you feel very passionate about. And finally, we, we talk about healthy relationships. We seek to build relationships with one another by reflecting the love that Jesus showed us and peacefully pursuing the unity of the Spirit. We recognize that God has created relationships to be a beneficial and integral part of how we enjoy God and grow in our faith, our walk with Him. And as a result, God has described how relationships should look, and we strive to live according to His standards and desires. And I actually look forward to, I think this next month, we're going to be going into some of these details of what it looks like theologically, but also practically to live this, to, to really be more accurate in doing this. And I look forward to being able to share a little bit more about these values. Yeah, I do too. Thank you. Thank you, PB. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, as you said, uh, we're, we're, Brent and I are going to sit down and we're going to talk about uh, who's going to do which one of these. And some of these value statements might be one Sunday, maybe, maybe there'll be two. But it's great to have a, a partner in ministry like uh, Pastor Brent, and we're gonna, I'm really looking forward to this. Um, but I, I've never done this before, and this is what I'm about to do today. But I do want to share with you a few things about the leaders in our church. And one of the things that we did with this, this board retreat, and we'd never done this before, is um, it was recommended to us that we do an evaluation of our board to see how effective we are. And so we had this survey given to us, and I'm not going to go over everything in there. It's, you don't need to know everything. Um, but I'm willing to share it with you if you have any questions. But it asks questions. There are 20 questions to rate our effectiveness, and each board member had to do this individually. You have to ask if that statement is, the first box is true, second box is more true than false, third box is more false than true, and the, fit, the final box would be false. And it's designed in such a way that uh, the more boxes that are checked with number one is true, the healthier the board is. And so we went through, and all of us did this um, somewhat anonymously, and I tabulated the scores, and at the end of the evaluation, it says, if this is your score, then this kind of is an indication of the effectiveness of your board. And so I want to share with you what the scores mean, and if you, this, is the, this is the worst score, a total of 80 um, points is possible. That would be number four on all of them. And if this is your, your score, your board is not functioning in any way that assists your pastor and your congregation, okay? The next set was 50 through 65. Your board has significant concerns. Your ability to determine the primary areas of concern will be difficult due to, due to the condition of your board and will require diligent and intentional work to best support your pastor and congregations. The next one, the second best, would be your board has important strengths, and is well suited for your ministry. Your board should be able to isolate the areas that need work so you can focus on them and improve. And the best would be a score of 20 to 34. And this says, you have an excellent board, and you should consider ways to share your board's gifts with the boards that need support. And all of us independently did this, and our total average score was 33.5. 33.5, and I, I wasn't surprised that we had a good score. And, you know, is, is that an accurate description of our board? I mean, we're good enough to help, help other boards. I, I just I want to share some things about the board members and the elders. And I don't do this to, to make anyone think that we have the perfect board or the perfect church. That's not, not at all the case. But I think that it's important for you as a flock to know a little bit more about the shepherds and how we view each other. And there is one one of these scores, or one of these questions in particular that really stood out to me, there was three of them that were um, identical. All of us had the exact same score. But the one that stood out to me the most was uh, question number 12. Uh, number, no, number 12, I put number 10. It's actually number 12. But it says, the board members trust and show respect towards one another. 
Now, wouldn't you think that it's important for a board, for the board members to show trust and respect? This was one of the only unanimous, all the board members answered the same, and all of them voted true. I think it's important for you to know that the board members here at Grace Bible Church of Phoenix really trust and respect the other board members. That's not always been the case. <laughs> and that's not always the case in every church, but it is right now. And I just came away just kind of confirming how much I appreciate the men that God has assembled to shepherd this flock. And that just kind of was a, a key takeaway. Our, our board is a strength of our church. And some of you might know that, and some of you don't. And so I just wanted to share that with you. And also, and th this passage is about the, the elders, and our staff, I think, is a tremendous strength of our church. I love our staff. Pastor Brent, Pastor C, Pastor Mike, Elizabeth, and Angie. We have a phenomenal staff, but the passage is about elders, so we're going to talk just about the elders. But I want you to know that the board here, the elders, they care deeply about God's word. They care deeply about Jesus Christ. They care deeply about this flock. They care deeply about our mission. And I said that this was going to be different, and I've never done this before, but I want you, if you don't know who the under-shepherds are, the elders at this church, I want to introduce them. And what I was thinking I should do this during the board retreat, like snap a candid picture of each of them eating, you know, and, and show you a picture of them, you know, stuffing their mouth with whatever. I, I, I respect them too much for that. So, um, but I, want, I do want them to just stand up if you're an elder here at this church, will you please stand? And I just want to just point you out for those who don't know. You're not going to have to say anything. So guys, stand up. Just stand. There we go. So up here we have Nathan Kincaid. For those of you who don't know, this is Nathan Kincaid. Right down in front we have Dan Rahoy. And we have Colin Brown right here. In the back of this section we have Travis Sanders. Then we have Adam Skelly in the back. And we have Matt Bray right here. And you guys can sit down. Thank you. And the one elder who is not here is Mike Thompson. Uh, you've probably seen him many times playing guitar, but he and his wife, Joan, are they're on a getaway for the weekend. But I, I want you to, to know these men, for, for those of you who don't know them, and the thing that I am so proud about the men that I serve with is these men, each of these men, they don't just serve on the board. They don't just come once a month and make decisions and policies. Every single one of these men are very involved in this ministry. They do so much more than just serve on the board. So I want to tell you what these men do. Start with Dan. He's the chairman. And I'm just, I'm, I'm going in this order because this is the order on the back of the bulletin, okay? I kind of made it simple. Not doing, you know, better, better to, or whatever. I'm going to stop talking right now. So Dan's first. He's the chairman. But Dan, this is what Dan does. And hopefully I'll get everything. Dan leads our senior ministry. He teaches adult Sunday school. I think you've taught children's Sunday school from time to time. He has served at camp for years. And he and Lee, they help with our jam ministry. Small group leader. And he does all of this living in Mesa. Dan Rahoy leads by example. Dan Rahoy leads by example. Matt Bray, right over there. Matt Bray, he's the vice. So if Dan can't step up, Matt is right there. Matt is very involved in this ministry. He is very involved in our men's Bible study. He and Andrew are very involved in the small groups. And Matt has taught multiple adult Sunday school classes, and I think he's helping teach the kids on, on very often. And Matt, and this is the small thing that he does, he heads up the maintenance around the church. He does, he does so much. He's here helping and doing so much. And Matt Bray is a multiple-time pie-eating champion at our church. <laughs> he deserves respect for that. Listen, Matt Bray leads by example. Matt Bray leads here by example. And Nathan Kincaid, right down here. He's our secretary, but no, he does not wear a skirt. <laughs> Why did I say that? Keep going, keep going, okay. The little, little voice that says, don't say that, okay. But Nate is very, he's very involved in men's Bible study, in our worship team. Um, you can play multiple instruments, and sometimes you see him up here playing multiple instruments. He is, he is our technology guru. He has built our, our church website. He's involved in our small group ministry. And you've been going to camp, what, 30 years? Something like that. Listen, Nathan Kincaid leads by example. Nathan Kincaid leads by example in this church. And Mike Thompson, he's not here, but same thing with him. He's our treasurer. And a lot goes into that. He's been faithfully serving as a treasurer for many years. He's very involved in our men's group ministry. He's involved in our senior group ministry. 
And for those of you who know him up here, he is a guitar player extraordinary. He's been serving, leading worship here at our church for years and years. Mike Thompson leads by example. Adam Skelly back there. He is involved in worship. Sometimes he's leading. He can play multiple things. And I say he's involved in the worship media that doesn't even begin to explain how involved he is. Pretty much everything technological in our worship service, Adam designed, installed. Everything back there, every, he, Adam is extremely involved in getting our church up to speed. Adam Skelly leads by example. He leads by example. And we have Colin Brown. Colin is involved in the worship team. He's up here all the time. He uh, is involved um, as a small group leader. He, has, he teaches Sunday school. He's teaching Sunday school right now. He's been going to camp for 10, 15 years at this point. And not only that, even outside of our church, he and his wife Elizabeth started a gym as a ministry. Colin, in and outside of our church, Colin Brown leads by example. Colin Brown leads by example. And Travis Sanders, okay? Travis and Jocelyn have been going here about 15 years, and Travis has been very involved. He goes to camp. You've been going to camp for probably 12, 13, 14 years. He is one of our Awana leaders on Tuesday night. He is a college ministry leader. He and his wife and Aaron and Selena Stinson, they lead up our college ministry. He has taught Sunday school classes before, been very involved in small groups. Travis Sanders leads by example at this church. Listen, all of these men lead by example. These are your elders. And the neat thing is, the same thing can be said about their wives. All of them, all of them are very involved. And I didn't even talk about them. We'd be here forever if I talked about everybody. But the same can be said about them. They're all involved. They all love the Lord. They all love you. They lead by example. And I just want you to know that. I think it's important for you to know that. I love these guys, and it's such an honor to be able to serve the chief shepherd with these guys, side by side. And the same is definitely true about our staff, and I didn't talk about them, and I'd love to brag about our staff. Maybe I'll do that another time, but the passage is about elders. I don't want to give you the impression that we're a perfect board, and we don't have a perfect church, but we're sincere, we're focused, and we really want to honor and serve the Lord. Here's another verse from Hebrews 13, and we're going to get look at, look at 1 Peter 5 really good um, next Sunday. But Hebrews 13 just says how the flock should respond to the shepherds. It says, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls. As those who will have to give an account, let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. So, this is us. <laughs> We're sheep. Those are cute sheep, right? Yeah. Hopefully that can be said about most of us. Well, in the coming weeks, like I mentioned, Pastor Brent and I are going to focus on why we exist. I'm already looking forward to that. And I like doing that in the fall and with Pastor Brent joining us. It's going to be a great time for us to say, this is why we exist and this is how we practice our mission. But next week, I'm going to look closer at 1 Peter chapter 5. But today, I introduce to you the shepherds here at this church some of you may have known these things, but many of you, maybe you didn't. You didn't even know who the men were who lead our church. But hopefully this is an opportunity for you to pray for these men. And if you're willing, thank them. Thank them for serving in a very unthankful job. Well, let's close in prayer and let's ask God to lead this church in this important ministry here at Grace Bible Church of Phoenix. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for our church family. I love our church family. It's such a blessing to be a part of this church. And today, as we're just focused on this passage in 1 Peter 5, I love the men that lead this church. I love our staff. I'm, I'm so blessed to be the pastor of this church and to serve alongside men who care for each other, who respect each other, who can honestly disagree with each other and yet respect each other at the same time. What a, what a blessing that is. So, Father, we want to be effective. We want to be fruitful in our ministry for you. So continue to lead us. Give us a spirit of unity as the leaders, but then also for our entire congregation. Lord, because we want to lead people to a saving knowledge of you and help them grow in their faith. So Father, bless our church. Bless this flock so that we can be a blessing for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Why don't you stand with us and we'll close in song. The hymn, How Great Thou Art. Oh, Lord, my God, when I'm in awe.
awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout the universe displayed Then sings my soul my soul, my Savior God to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. And when I think that God, His Son, not sparing, sent Him to die, I scarce can My soul, my Savior, God, to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art, then sings my soul. And take me home, but joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, God, how great thou art. And sings my soul.